Shalom. First and foremost, I would like to start off by giving all praise, glory, and honor to our power, Yahweh, Bahashem, in the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, in the name of the Rahakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit. And um, I want to say double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS, better known as Great Millstone, who rule well. And as always, we like to give peace and salutations unto the elect. And um, this is going to be a quick impromptu video. As you can see here on the screen, all right, the shelves are coming empty, all right? And the title of this lesson is going to be Famine of the Bread, okay, or Famine of Bread. And as you can see here on the title, it says, Truckies warn of empty shelves and imminent supply chain collapse due to disastrous tax cut that was supposed to help Aussies, all right? Now, this is from the Daily Mail Australia, all right, posted up on the 31st of May, Australian Easter time, as you can see here. And um, this this is where we're at, all right, because this is not just happening in Australia, all right, but this is also happening in Babylon, okay, which is America and all the different parts of the world, all right? But just a quick insight, all right, a few dot points here. It says over 50% of truck companies face bankruptcy because of fuel tax cut food and produce trucks will soon be forced off the road industry body warns trucking companies want the albanese government to bring back the fuel credit because if you guys haven't been watching australia just uh sworn in a new prime minister all right which the former prime minister was scott morrison all right uh but now it's ran the uh, office has been taken over by a gentleman um name Albanese, all right? But uh, just a little back door cut through this. It says, truckies are warning of an imminent collapse to the nation's supply chain, claiming the fuel uh, excess cut that was supposed to ease the cost of living for Aussies will force them off the road. In other words, due to the, uh, the price hike in uh, gas prices and petrol prices, all right? Um, they can't afford pretty much to fuel up their trucks. So what happens when the trucks are uh, not able to fuel up their trucks due to the prices of gas or petrol or diesel for this sense? Because trucks uh, take diesel. All right. That means that they are unable to deliver to the storehouses. All right. To warehouses and such. OK, because there's an old saying when a truck stops, the country stops or the economy stops. Right. It says former Prime Minister Scott Morrison made the decision to half Australia's fuel uh, access t uh, tax back in March after Russia's invasion of Ukraine forced petrol prices through the roof. While the tax cut was good for Aussies filling up at the pump, it's been disastrous for truck companies who were forced to shoulder most of the costs and saw their petrol discount taken away. It says truck drivers only see a 4.3% cent cut per liter in their diesel bills compared to the 22.1 cent cut enjoyed by the rest of the population. And um, if you work out the maths, I don't know how much that is per gallon, but that's 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 uh, that's pretty uh, that's a large amount. All right. So there you see here. All right. Empty shelves could be on the cards if Australia's trunk companies collapse. All right. And, um, you know, this is nothing new because we saw what happened, all right, in Canada just over a year ago, almost a year ago, all right, with the truck truck companies, all right, protesting, all right, uh, going out there on the roads and stuff like that, not being able to deliver, all right, and just to show you that this thing is, this is a global thing. This is, Australia is just, you know, one of many, all right, but this is also here in Babylon the Great, America, all right, and it's going to come on a deeper scale. OK. Uh, and, you know, this has been prophesied. All right. That the famine is coming. All right. So let's grab a few precepts I got here. All right. We're going to start off with second address, chapter 22. Uh, Salakia, chapter six. All right. And um, 
Yeah, well, yeah, let's get straight to the point. Second address, chapter six, verse 22. It is says, and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. You see that? And all your storehouses is pretty much what you see here. Your everyday grocery shopping. All right. Whether you go to a, you know, the Dollar Tree store, uh, Sam's Club, Walmart, whatever it is you go. All right. If you're in Australia, Big W, which is their version of Walmart. Woolies, Coles, all right? All of this is coming, right? It says, verse 23, and the trumpet shall give a sound, okay? And that trumpet is us sounding off the warning. We're warning you that this is coming, okay? We're blowing the trumpet, right? It says, and the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man hear it, they shall be suddenly afraid, Okay? Because when this happens on a greater scale, you're not going to know what to do, right? But what does it say in verse 24? It says, at that time, shall friends fight one <laughs> against another like enemies? Yeah, why? Because remember at the start of 2020, when we had the uh, the people, uh, I forgot the phrase they use, but you know, when people at the start of 2020, when the uh, pandemic first hit, what was happening? And as you can see here, running out of toilet paper. So people were buying up, they were, they were stocking up and then you couldn't get no toilet paper. Well, guess what? That's coming back on a whole nother scale because it's not this time. You're not going to have to worry about toilet paper. You're going to have to worry about food. Right. Verse 24 again, second address, chapter six, verse 24. At that time, shall friends fight one against another like enemies and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run, all right? Because also, we're not gonna have water, okay? They're already talking about a, a, a supposedly, allegedly, let me say that uh, for YouTube guidelines, right? There's allegedly going to be a e EMP attack, all right? Which means the power grid is gonna shut down. So what are you gonna do in that time when you have no running water, you have no power, OK, and we told you, especially you women. All right. You you women who've been, you know, running your mouth and everything who have more than three kids and don't have a man by your side. What are you going to do when these things come? OK, it's something to think about. All right. As Apostle Ramla says, think about it. Right. Inside joke. All right. Let's grab a uh, second after chapter 15 and start at verse 18. Right. But uh. Actually, we'll start at verse 16. It says, for there should be sedition among men and in invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes in the course of their action shall stand in their power. Right. Because what's going to happen is due to lack of bread. OK. And this great famine has come as well as pestilences. Like one of the pestilence you have now is the, uh, the monkey pox. OK. Uh, that's starting to be spread on a global scale. But when this stuff comes at a rapid rate, all right, which these are known as the beginning stages of the growing pains, right? Basically, people are going to disregard their um, their governments. They're going to disregard their local authorities, all right? And by them doing that, okay, they're going to take power or they're going to take matters into their own hands, I should say, for lack of better terms, right? Verse 17, it says, a man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. Why? Because... This is this is to set up for the uh, for the attack. OK, this is what Esau Edom is known. All right. Cre uh, cre uh, what do they go by order out of chaos? All right. You create the chaos. And then once you create the chaos, like you see here in the stores, then you create the solution. All right. You create order. And part of that order is going to be a one world government. OK, their NWO, which they are going to fail miserably in setting up because the Lord is not going to allow it. Eventually, he's going to have to step in. All right. Now, where it says a man shall desire to go into a city. All right. That's talking about um, the blockades that they're going to set up through FEMA is going to be 10 zones, 10 FEMA zones. OK. And basically those 10 FEMA zones. Right. Um, is going to be set up in a way where all 50 states are going to be put into those 10 zones. So you will not be able to go. All right. Travel uh, interstate into the next town. Okay, then this is coming. All right. Verse 18, it says, 
For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. All right. And why should they be afraid? Verse 19. It says, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword. And what is the modern day sword today? The gun. And spoil their goods because of what? Lack of bread and for great tribulation, which is coming. Okay, you see it right here. All right, because eventually people are going to go into survival mode and then whoever has, all right, whoever has this stuff, okay, they're going to be the most targeted, especially if they've been flexing and saying, you know, well, I'm stocked up, I'm good, I got all this in the third. Yeah, yeah, you're going to be the biggest target, right? So let's see here. Uh, let's drop down to verse 49. All right, straight to the point. Second address 15 to 49. All right. It says, I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, poverty, famine, sword and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. So all of this is being done on the left hand side uh, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Shah. Now we know. OK, let's get a quick precept. Uh, let's go to Deuteronomy. Right. Chapter 32, because a lot of people don't understand the true nature of the heavenly father, right? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39, it says, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no power with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So if you're sanctioned to die through pestilence, if you're sanctioned to die through famine, if you're sanctioned to uh, to die through any sort of judgment, uh, Yahweh sets up for you, you can't do anything about it, okay? Nobody can deliver you out of Yahweh's hand. If he sanctions it for you to go out a certain way, that's just what it is, all right? Let's get another precept to back that up and prove. Let's get Psalms chapter 68, and I believe it's verse 20. Yep, Psalm 68, verse 20, it says, He that is our power is the power of salvation, and unto Yahweh the Lord belong the issues from death. OK, so meaning he's the one that sanctions death. So if it's your time to go, it's your time to go. It's nothing you can do about it. Right. So let's keep it pushing. Let's get second address, chapter 16. Back to the Apocrypha. All right. Ooh, Salakia. All right. This is second uh, address, chapter 16. And we're going to start at verse 18. It says the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. You see that? What shall I do when these evils shall come? Behold, famine, OK, plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. OK, so when you when you really get down to the nitty gritty of all of it. Okay. Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is doing this. All right. For amendment. All right. And it's also um, to punish the wicked of the earth. Okay. Which are the other heathen nations based upon the controversy of Zion, what they did to us. And that's in the book of Isaiah chapter 34, but also of uh, towards our people. All right. Two thirds of Israelites. Okay. Who are, are, who are sinners. All right. Verse 20 says, but for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. You see that? So everything that's going on on the planet Earth, OK, with all these pestilences such as the uh, the virus, the, uh, the monkey pox that's out now, um, you know, thing like the, the inflation. OK, not be able to afford this, just falling on your luck, all this stuff, you know, people dying, dropping dead, left, right, and center. These are all judgments. From Yahweh by Shimei Shai. And yet our people still don't consider, they don't consider the power of Yahweh by Shimei Shai because they don't know the Heavenly Father. Right? That's why it says there, let me read verse 20 again. But for all these things, meaning what? Going back up to verse 19, the famine, the plague, the tribulation, everything that we're seeing on the planet Earth. Okay? But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges. Okay. That's why a lot of y'all should consider, okay, the latter end, 
getting yourselves right, walking through the straight gate, making your call into an election sure. OK, because what are you going to do? All right. When all of this comes, let's let's drop down to verse 22. It says, for many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. Right. Perish of famine. This is this is we're in some serious times. OK, Jacob's trouble. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse seven. Right. Perish of famine and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy. So there is no way you're going to get out of judgment. If you survive this on the screen, guess what? Yahweh Bashim Yahweh he said it. He says, let's read it again. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine and the other that escape of hunger. So if you escape the famine that's coming, guess what's waiting for you? The sword is going to destroy you. So you can have it to where martial law can creep in. They got you. They can put a bullet through your head. Or remember, we read in Second Ezra, the 15th chapter. All right. Uh, men are going to break into houses because of lack of bread. So you're going to have people that's going to be threatening, taking people's lives just so that they can eat and feed their families. This is what we're coming to. <laughs> hey, all right. Call hello. You how about shimmy I was shy, man. All right. Let's get Sirach. Chapter 12. All right. Verse six. It says, for the most high hateth sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. OK, because that mighty day is when Yahweh Bashem is going to come back and he's going to drop those ICBM missiles on Babylon the Great, which is America and other parts of the world. Uh, mainly over there in, in the Levant region, okay, where all of the um, nations are being gathered, okay, to the Valley of Jehoshaphat or Yahweh Shapat, which is the Valley of Decisions, okay, where he's going to judge those nations. And also Jerusalem, uh, uh, Palestine is going to be utterly wasted too, okay, because Salakia, we got to get those heathens out of our land, all right? But the wicked is kept for the day of a punishment. That's why it also says in the Old Testament, let's go get Ecclesiastes chapter uh, eight and verse 11. Highlight that for y'all. It says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, meaning what? When when a lot of people on earth, mainly Esau, Edom, but also the other heathen nations, because they, they ass is guilty as well. All right. When they do things out of the ordinance of the heavenly father, meaning when they transgress the laws, all right, on the planet Earth, nothing happens to them. They don't get punished. So it goes on to say, therefore, the heart of the sons of man is fully set in them to do evil. This is why they continue uh, doing their wickedness. All right. Case in point. All right. When, uh, you know, a uh, 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 occasion of call. All right. And I'm saying it backwards. Put put the two and two together. All right. So this video only get taken down when occasions of call. All right. When they go uh, get done in for something, they go to court, they get a slap on the wrist. So it's set within their mind to continue to go and do their wickedness because they're not really getting judged for it. All right. But the Heavenly Father. All right. He's he's going to shut all that down. All right. Because judgment is coming. They're they're being kept. Let's grab that again. Ecclesiasticus chapter 12, verse six. It says for the most high hated sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly. And keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. So they're being kept. OK, you can you can sit here, keep keep doing what you're doing. It's all right because you're being kept for the slaughter. You're going to be utterly destroyed when the Lord comes back. Right. Let's grab one more precept. Let's get Isaiah. Real quick. And Lord's will, this is uh, edifying to the sheep out there who have ears to hear and eyes to see. All right. Isaiah chapter five, uh, chapter 65, Salakia. And uh, we're going to start at verse 12. It says, therefore, will I number you to the sword? And this is talking about two thirds of our people. And ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear, but did evil before my eyes. Because two thirds of our people, they're going to be put to death. 
right? It says, and did choose that wherein I delighted not. Therefore, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, behold, my servants shall eat. So the elect, that remnant who is found written in a book, we're going to we're going to survive this. Salakia, this right here, we're going to survive this. We're going to eat. The Lord is going to make a way for his elect. Right. But what does it say? But ye shall be hungry. So two thirds of our people, y'all going to be hungry. It says, behold, my servants shall drink. OK, but ye shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. You see that? You're going to be ashamed. And let's get one more for good measure, because what happened in the book of Jeremiah? Let's get Jeremiah chapter 15. All right. It says, and it shall come to pass if they say unto thee, whither shall we go forth? Then thou shalt tell them, thus said the Lord, Yahweh. Such as are for death to death and such as are for the sword to the sword and such as are for the famine to the famine and such as are for the captivity to the captivity. So this is going to come back once again during Jacob's trouble. Whoever is uh, sanctioned to go death to death, sword to sword, famine to famine, captivity to captivity. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is going to sanction it. Remember, we read it in Psalms, the 68 chapter, the issues of death belong to the Heavenly Father. So this is coming back on a whole nother level. That's why that it tells you. Let's uh, end it on here. All right. That's just the spirit. Let's get a precept. Ecclesiasticus chapter uh, 39. We're going to start at verse 28. It says there be spirits that are created for vengeance which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Verse 29, fire and hell and famine. See that? Famine, right? And death, all these were created for vengeance. Yahweh Hashem Yahweh is angry, so this has to come. Vengeance. Verse 30, teeth of wild beasts, scorpions, serpents, and the sword, punishing the wicked to destruction, which are going to be preserved. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and 6, they're going to be preserved for the day of vengeance. They shall rejoice, meaning these evil spirits that were created, in his commandment. And they shall be ready upon the earth when need is, and when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word. So when Yahweh Shem Shai. All right, let's loose on this place. Okay. It, when all hell breaks loose, that's it. So whoever is destined, all right, which we read in Jeremiah 15, all right, from the sword to the sword, from uh famine to famine, who whoever is destined to take part in that judgment, it's been sanctioned on you. All right. So that's it for that. Um call halal, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bashim Rakakwa Dash. Yahweh Rathazah, Lord willing, you guys were edified. Until the next time, Shalom.